Istanbul Film Festival celebrates its 35th edition with a rich program ranging from the latest productions of world cinema to cult films to the latest Turkish films and the classics, new discoveries, masterpieces and hidden treasures. And to talk about this, I am joined by movie critic Nagihan Halilolu. Well, hello. Hi. How did you find the 35th Istanbul Film Festival? What are your impressions so far? Okay, um, very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I've been uh, able to see a handful of films and it seems to me um, uh, the films that um, they've selected try to tackle uh, many of the political problems, sort of cultural problems that we face, particularly the immigration um, and the refugee crisis. Mm -hmm. um, the films that I've um, liked very much also had to deal with um, uh, European identity, the borders of Europe. Um, mm -hmm. And they're coming at sort of these issues through sort of very oblique, very interesting angles. Right. Um, I mean, some of the films that I liked very much uh, to start with was um, Francophonia uh, by uh, Alexander Sokrov, a Russian filmmaker. So it was a part documentary, sort of part feature film, uh, in which he uh, looked at the history of uh, the Louvre Museum and mm -hmm. uh, what happened when the Nazis came in and then how the collection was collected in the first place uh, by Bonaparte and it's, it's a very interesting production in which uh, there's a, the Bonaparte character, the Napoleon character uh, that takes us through the Louvre. Um, uh, another very interesting one um, was uh, Heimatland, uh, mm -hmm. Swiss German production and it's very interesting because uh, when you look at the program it's got about what seven eight directors but still it's a very kind of contained uh, aesthetically very contained film um, it's been translated as wonderland in english for some reason but whereas heimatland is sort of homeland mm -hmm. and it's about um, uh, this sort of black cloud hanging over uh, switzerland and some kind of apocalyptic feeling that uh, you know, there's going to be a horrendous storm and we see Swiss nationals trying to leave the country. So again, right. all this kind of sort of uh, borders, who can stay in, who, who, have to, who has to go out. And um, when you look at some of the films, although they um, seem to be dealing with certain things, I found that the ghost of the, uh, the Second World War seemed to be haunting uh, right. these, uh, these stories in a very interesting way. Um, another one, maybe my favourite, and I... I'm guessing, I'm maybe hoping that it's going to right. win the international uh, award. Um, uh, it's the the childhood of a leader, uh, and uh, it's been uh, adapted from uh, a Sartre uh, short story, uh, and it's again about uh, well, it's the end of the First World War, and it's about an American diplomat and his family in France. Uh, the, the diplomat is here uh, to oversee peace negotiations, again, something that was very sort of very um, topical in that sense, and mm -hmm. how his family life is kind of uh, reflected in the way that he deals with, uh, you know, the ills of Europe or the sort of problems in, in Europe. Right. So, yeah, very, very exciting stuff. Um, would you say that's a personal favourite? Are there any movies would, that you found personally yeah, more intriguing than yeah, others? Yeah, I, I think this is my favourite, definitely, because um, then, I mean, it is about this child who grows up in that household, and then um, it's very sort of allegorical in the sense that this little child is going to be post Great War right. Europe. I mean, mm -hmm. what are you going to? What is he going to be like? And it's almost like an obsessed or rather possessed child who's always mm -hmm. very problematic. But then we see how his parents treat him, and then we say, hmm, we understand why this child isn't very psychologically yeah. uh, stable. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very, very interesting. Um, there have been a number of in increasing number of film festivals in Istanbul. Um, how would you say that's, in your personal f opinion, affecting the arts and culture industry and the film industry as a um, whole? Well, hopefully in a positive way. I think mm -hmm. Istanbul's, Istanbulites are really spot for choice. Um, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. feel that I'm sort of tr trying to chase my own tail, really, because, mm -hmm. I mean, it starts off with the October Film Festival and then uh, in October, and then in February we have the Independent Film Festival. Yes. And I mean, of course, life in Istanbul being what it is, I mean, you can't see all the films and now you kind of um, spend the interim period trying to chase up the films that you wanted to see and couldn't see mm -hmm. and kind of all, 
you know, just newly recovering from the IF festival, and now it's Istanbul Film right. Festival, and it's going to take me probably a few months to kind of see all the films that I've failed to see, because, I mean, this is really expensive. I mean, spreading over, what, seven, eight maybe venues all yeah. over the... And mostly in Beolu, but sort of uh, over the Asian side as well. So, right. yeah, very, very hard to keep up with. Especially for avid goes like yourself. I know people who go in at 11 and then watch film after film yeah, after definitely. film. Yeah, And it's hard to... And you can tell when you're sitting in the, in the film and then you see some people leaving early because, you know, they've probably got tickets... Somewhere else. Somewhere too. else that they're oh. rushing off. Mm -hmm. Within yes. Istanbul traffic, of course. <gasps> yeah. 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 Well, the Turkish film industry has... Uh, the, um, the TV series industry has really taken off and uh, we see high demand for um, TV series in other countries and all around the world. Uh, what would you say about the movie industry? Um, I think they're also uh, quite keen Turkish uh, sort of movie enthusiasts, well, in Turkey and abroad. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we know, uh, 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 for instance, uh, Semih Kaplanoğlu's films, or, uh, you know, I mean, the, the, the winter sleep, for instance, that everybody mm -hmm. was really sort of mad to see. And um, it's, I find it very interesting because Turkish films seem to be quite long uh, compared to some of the European or American films. Oh, well, uh, that. So yeah. I think some of the actual fascination lies there that, and it seems to me, um, sort of the, the longer the, f the TV series are getting, the shorter the f the films, the films are getting. The, the films are getting. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, people want to invest time with characters, so spend more time mm -hmm. with characters. And I think um, movie enthusiasts, real movie enthusiasts, uh, I mean, who are sort of interested in the aesthetics of everything, I think they go for longer films. So I think sort of Turkish cinema actually does have quite a few acolytes, um, I would say. So I think it's looking pretty good, actually. <laughs> okay, well, before we go, let's go back to the 35th Istanbul yeah. Film Festival. Any recommendations in the following days that people can see last minute? Um, yeah, well, um, there's one, um, uh, Death in Sarajevo, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm hoping to see uh, mm -hmm. by Danis uh, Tanovic, and it's been uh, adapted from... Uh, a work uh, by uh, Bernard Henri Levy uh, called uh, uh, Hotel Europe. Um, as far as Turkish films go, um, I looked at the selection. It seemed to me um, it's sort of uh, between sort of the usual rural sort of I want to go to the city kind of stories and then there are right. the city stories in which uh, characters don't seem to be able to communicate with one another. But one mm -hmm. um, sort of attracted me, it's uh, called Colony and it's set in Cyprus and it's called, I mean, it's looking really good, the pictures, and it's um, advertised as psychogeography. So these sort of abandoned places, you know, mm -hmm. how does it feel to be sort of at the edges of things instead of abandoned? So that looks interesting. Uh, my favorite, sort right. of a very sort of niche taste, I would say, there's this um, very strange documentary called Grey Gardens mm -hmm. um, about a woman, um, sort of a middle-aged woman and her mother living in this, again, abandoned building. And they, the oh. crew filmed them over a period of time. I mean, they're both basically bonkers. And it's very, very <laughs> strange. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting sort of to see their relationship and mm -hmm. the kind of uh, uh, sort of, uh, yeah, language that they've developed. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, so these are the niche ones, but there are also a few sort of blockbuster ones. There's just George Clooney's Hail Caesar. Uh, yeah. There's one that I really want to see, and these are things that I, well, don't usually go to at the festival because they will mm -hmm. probably come back again. Uh, there's one uh, Miles Davis uh, you mean the biopic. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. They, they will, they, I mean, there'll be other opportunities to see them. Mm -hmm, uh, sure. So the Miles Davis uh, blog, uh, film biopic mm -hmm. uh, with Don Cheadle uh, looks very, very good. Um, and there's one I'm looking forward to, High Rise. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, by Ben Wheatley, if I'm not wrong. Again, about this kind of living in the sort of brutalist uh, apartment block and the kind of relationships that developed, developed sort of in that kind of space. So, yeah, a, lo a lot to choose from, really. Okay, well, that was a lot of information. Thank you very much for <laughs> You're that. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs>